Hello and welcome to a first look at another mid-sized electric crossover SUV. <laughs> now, uh, Andy, no, Andy, where no, you going? No, I'm not doing that. Hello and welcome to a first look at another mid-sized electric crossover SUV. But wait, because this one is premium. Mm. Now, Andy, mm. Andy, no, come no, back, no, Andy. I'm not doing Andy, mate, do you think the idea of covering another blobby electric SUV sets my trousers on fire? It does not, my friend. But just hear me out, okay? Because this, this is quite an interesting car, quite an important car. You see, this is the new Smart One. Oh, editing room Jack here. Just a quick thing. Smart were very keen that at least once in the video, we refer to the car by its full official name, the Smart Hashtag One. Yeah, I know. Anyway, it's the first car of the new era at Smart. And where previously Smart was 100% owned by Mercedes, it's now 50-50 split between Mercedes and China's Geely. You know, the same Geely that gave us Polestar, the new look Volvo, the new look Lotus. This, this is German design with Chinese hardware and that is quite a recipe. But more to the point, this could be quite an interesting insight into how our cars get made into the future. So like I said, Andy, it's interesting. So this is the new smart one and this, it, Andy, Andy. So, new smart car, new look, smart brand. What's it all about? Well, let me just caveat very quickly by saying, excuse the slightly unorthodox filming space today. Do excuse me if you hear a bit of low-level chat in the background or someone sort of frantically runs across the shot with a box of champagne. Uh, there's a fairly swanky event here at the British Museum this evening. That's where we are. Uh, it's sort of a showcase of the new car for UK retailers. This is not a filming event. They've just very kindly snuck us in when no one was looking for a little quick shoot because, well, we're quite interested in this thing and we wanted to see it before everyone else because, you know, that's fun, isn't it? So, new smart car, new smart brand. In their own words, the mission is premium all electric urban mobility, which is posh talk for fancy city cars. That's what smart car used to be. It's what they will continue to do. Uh, when we say city cars, it's worth noting this thing is quite a bit bigger and quite a lot longer on range than your run of the mill electric city car. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. The other little bit of PR spiel that I've pulled out of the marketing literature that I'd like to share with you is this, that this car is the nucleus of all things to come from Smart, which is to say all of this design language, the look and feel of it inside and out, that will set the tone for all subsequent electric Smart models and they will only be electric. I'm certainly hoping the compact two-seater akin to the old 4.2 is coming next because it wouldn't be Smart without one of those. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this car is uh, the product of the new Mercedes Geely merger. Smart is now 50 50 owned between Mercedes and Geely. And as I understand it, the agreement is quite literally Mercedes will do the design and the stuff you can see, Geely will do the electric vehicle hardware, the tech, the stuff that you can't see, the stuff that they're really, really good at. It's worth noting Merck does have its own bespoke EV platform. It uses it on the EQS and the EQS SUV and the EQE, but it's a bit of a long boy and it's quite posh and premium and not really suited to a lower priced city car. So they've borrowed this one, which is called the CEA platform from Geely. And this same platform is going to underpin a small electric Volvo very soon too. As far as prices, we don't have an exact number yet, but Smart is saying that they want this car to be in line with an ID3. I'm guessing they mean a specced up posh ID3 because this thing is specced to the gills. So I think that probably means somewhere in the mid 30,000s mark. And first deliveries are expected to begin roughly mid next year. Uh, enough of that, enough of that. Let's have a nosy round this shiny new car, shall we? Design then, well, can I just say first and foremost, I was lukewarm when I saw the pictures of this car, but seeing it in the metal, I think it's absolutely lovely. It's a really smart, hey? Hey, looking car. I'm ashamed of myself. It is though, it's a nice looking thing. It's quite unusual looking from certain angles, the back end in particular, but it works for me. Let me take you on a little tour of some of my favorite features. At the front, we have a very identifiably Mercedes EQ light bar type situation. That to me is kind of straight off the Mercedes EQS. Brand, heritage, lineage is the word I was looking for. 
not too much else to speak on. Quite a clean, simple, soft and rounded face. Quite a happy looking car. We've got some air intakes down here. Are these real? Do these go anywhere? They do. We've got a little bit of air curtainage there so that, that air sweeps across those aero wheels, maximizing efficiency and range. Very nice. Coming around the side, First thing you notice, it is a proper little crossover SUV, quite high riding, quite a tall car. It's almost the exact same length and has almost the exact same length of wheelbase as the ID3. Again, it's a perk of that bespoke EV platform. What does it allow you to do? Push the wheels right out into the corners of the car, maximizing cabin space. And the cabin space is saying a lot in this car. We'll come to that in a second. Rims, I like these rims. These are the big 19s, they're the biggest you can get. I don't imagine many people will spec them, but I think they look fantastic. Really unusual design, big fan of those. Coming around the side, what have we got? We've got a kind of floating roof, they call this. They're sort of hiding the A and B pillars as best they can to make it look like this roof is, well, floating. This back end piece, to me, very Vauxhall Adam. Anyone? No? Charge flap. It's got one of those, you know, for charging. And that, that's good design, thoughtful. 150 kilowatt charging up to on this car, pretty quick. Also, let's just talk about the battery. 66 kilowatt hours, which is good for a quoted 273 miles of range. That's no city car range, that's a big battery. That's an everyday, whatever you need it to be type of range. One assumes that means that smaller, cheaper, uh, variants will come with smaller, cheaper batteries, I should say. In fact, I'm sure they will. And the, the, the clear clue that this is a top of the line launch spec car is the motor, because this rear drive single motor car is good for 268 horsepower and a six second naught to 60 time. That's quicker than a Cupra Born. That is hot hatch quick. It's really fast for a car like this, a bit unnecessary potentially, but it's there if you want it. And I'm sure smaller motored versions with more modest power outputs will follow. Back end. Again, really distinctive Mercedes EQ style light bar. That for me is straight off the EQS. It's very recognizable as a Mercedes product. And it's just a really smart looking thing. Do you know what? I'm gonna say it. I think this is better looking than any electric Mercedes that you can buy right now. I think it's certainly more interesting looking than that slightly frumpy EQS SUV that they just unveiled. If you just sort of multiplied one of these by 1.5, that's a much more interesting looking car to me. Boot, can't say I have the numbers for the boot to mind off the top of my head, but uh, I'm going to eyeball it and tell you whether I think it's big or not. And then uh, editors who are cleverer than me will put the actual number down there. Small. Right, it's time for a look at the inside of the Smart One. But before we do, worth noticing these bad boys, hello, hidden door handles. These, combined with a very surprisingly aerodynamic design, uh, amount to a 0.29 drag coefficient. That is a properly slippery bit of design, considering it's a high-riding crossover. Also worth noting that these uh, flush door handles, these lovely frameless doors, and this floating roof will likely be smart car design staples. Anyway. Have a look in here, it's well nice. Now then, interior of the Smart One. This is really nice. It's really, really high-end stuff in here. A reminder that this is allegedly an ID3 rival. The idea that this interior is going to cost me the same as the one in the ID3 is fairly hard to get my head around because this feels proper Mercedes. This is a Mercedes designed cabin and you can tell there are aesthetic details in here like the emphasis on slightly posh air vents that remind me of a Merc interior. This material here, which I'm not sure about the bronziness of, but I do quite like is quite familiar to anyone that sat in a high-end Mercedes car. It's an extremely premium 
interior 12.8 inch touchscreen i believe that's as standard there isn't a cheaper version with a smaller screen this is what you get again really stating this car's intention as a properly posh small ish urban electric car i really want to touch it I really want to touch it and prod around it and tell you what it's like, but I've been told that's the one thing I'm not allowed to do today. Sorry, this is an early look, so we can't do absolutely everything. But I can tell you that this user interface is Geely made. So the design of the inside and outside, that's Mercedes, but the platform and the software, that's Geely. I expect to see a lot more of this kind of collaboration in years to come where our European brands are sort of doing the design and making it look like theirs, but underneath they are sharing Chinese made componentry because it is just quite a lot further along. But I digress. Not allowed to touch that. What I can tell you is there will be a heavy emphasis on AI with this user interface. Don't really know what that means. There's a fox in the corner who's sort of chilling out, having a little stretch and yawn every now and then. Fox. Heated seats on. Okay, never mind, that didn't work. I'm sure it'll be fantastic. We will get around to testing that when we're allowed to. Other things of note, well, this is a bespoke EV, meaning they could have given us the flat floor, open plan cabin, like say an Ionic 5. Instead, they've gone with this kind of floating center console in order to give you lots of storage space. We've got wireless charger in there, a couple cup holders, nice little cubby for your phone there. Worth noting, it's just, there's a feeling of quality. There's a kind of weight and tactility to the stuff that you touch in here. And that is very Mercedes. And it's nice to see in a car of this segment. A lot of different colors going on in here. I'm not super sure about that. The fact that I've got bronze, silver, tan, and black all just in my door, potentially a little bit much, but that is spec and preference, isn't it? And look at this, look at this floating door handle design on the door just generally the shape and aesthetic in here very snaz a couple final things to mention really like this thin strip readout in front of the driver i feel like this is getting more popular as a design choice skinny little readout for the driver giving you the bare essentials and then all the extra stuff on the big screen same as the mac e same as the lotus electra that we had a look at a few months ago we need to stop calling these gauge clusters because they're not that and then the final point would you look how much space there is in here? It is absolutely cavernous. I couldn't touch that roof of my head if I wanted to. The perks of the high-riding, tall-bodied SUV, I suppose. The fact that they're giving you this much headroom, this much SUV feel, but still getting a 0.29 drag coefficient, i.e. a very slippery car, is quite impressive. But is there room for a jack in the back? Yes. In fact, I can't imagine that there is another car with this size footprint that has this much room in the back. This is extremely impressive. Tons of legroom, seat in my position, loads of headroom. There is so much space in here. I almost forgive them for that little tiny boot. <music> Concluding thoughts on the new Smart One then. Well, really a lot more impressed than I came here expecting to be. Like we alluded to in the intro, it's getting quite hard to get excited about new crossover EVs because there are a lot of them, but it's nice to have choice. And actually, of this now quite congested segment of medium-sized electric things costing 30-something thousand pounds, this ID3, new Nero, Kona, Aura Cat, I think this might be the most desirable of the bunch. I think the, de the design is fantastic. The interior space is remarkable. The idea of a Mercedes Geely Alliance really is quite a formidable thing. It really just seems like everything the Geely brand touches seems to turn to gold when it comes to electric vehicles at this point. Anyone with any lingering fears or suspicions about Chinese built electric cars, meaning lesser build quality or inferior tech, it turns out the exact opposite is true. They are better than us at the hardware and the software. And that is why Mercedes, Mercedes has gone to Geely and asked them for help with building this new smart car. I think we're going to see a lot more of this in years to come. As I mentioned earlier, I think that this formula of a European brand providing its distinctive design, its feel, its heritage, and a Chinese maker like Geely providing all the difficult bits that they've already gotten really good at while our European brands sort of sat around taking their sweet time. 
could be a winning formula and it could be an effective way for European brands who were a bit slow to start to catch up quite quickly. So, the smart one, not just a very impressive car, but an interesting glimpse into the future of the industry. There we have it. Looking forward to driving this thing. Hopefully we'll be doing so soon. Really want to prod the screen as well. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that episode with Jack and how does he get in those cars? Because honestly, he is still growing to this day. Anyway, there's another episode with Jack there. There's a brilliant episode there, one of our latest. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged and that is our Patreon link.